you have a lot of DVDs and Blu-ray movies and TV shows you want to watch on your tablet or laptop and you're looking for a good media server to help out, well, we're going to be doing a three-part video series on how to install and configure the popular media streaming services of Plex, Jellyfin, and MB, with today's video focused on Plex. We'll touch on a bit of history, the basics of media streaming, how video transcoding works, as well as installation on Windows, and how to organize your libraries, so stay tuned. So while we're on the subject of media streaming, I was trying to watch something on the BBC iPlayer and I got geoblocked because I don't reside in the UK. And if you're ever dealing with you know, block services or block websites, managing multiple accounts or facing IP bans, you know these challenges are a pain to deal with. The good news is that using a proxy server can solve these issues better than VPNs especially for tasks that require multiple IP addresses and high traffic, such as data scraping, account management, and accessing geo-restricted content like BBC's iPlayer. Thankfully, there's an affordable solution from Floppy Data. Floppy Data is a powerful proxy service designed to make online activity secure, seamless, and accessible from anywhere in the world. Whether you need proxies for secure browsing, automation, or large-scale data collection, Floppy Data has you covered. Floppy Data offers millions of global IP proxies from over 195 locations worldwide, including residential, mobile, data centers, and you can even select proxies by specific cities. Floppy Data also offers rotating or static proxies, which are perfect for web scraping, automation tasks, or managing multiple accounts. And speaking of using multiple accounts, Flap Data also seamlessly integrates with the anti-detect browser Go Login, ensuring you and your team can work privately and securely. The best part is Flappy Data's special pricing offer starting at 90 cents per gigabyte of proxy traffic. So whether you need proxies for web scraping, automation, watching BBC content, or just secure browsing, I would highly recommend you check out Floppy Data to take advantage of their very affordable, fast, and reliable proxy solutions. I will leave affiliate links with discount codes in the video description, and thank you to Floppy Data for sponsoring today's video. Back to our discussion on Plex. So Plex has a pretty interesting history. It started in 2007 when developer Elon Feingold created a media center application for his Mac by porting the then Media Center player XBMC, which is known today as Cody. And around the same time, uh, Casey Ullman and Scott Olchowski, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, who were also working on XBMC projects, noticed his work and offered to support him. And that launched Plex in 2009. Today, Plex has ad-supported movies and television shows from content sources such as Warner Brothers Domestic Television Distribution, MGM, Lionsgate, Regency Enterprises, and Legendary Entertainment, to name a few, has over 100 employees and, as of last year, started offering movie rental services. So with a little history out of the way, there are two parts to Plex. It has a server component, which delivers the video content like your movies and TV shows, and a client like a Plex app on your TV or smartphone that you use to consume your movies and TV shows. So let's start with getting Plex installed on Windows and getting it configured. Okay, so here we are on the Plex.com uh, website. And if you do not have an account yet, you can click on sign up for free to get your free account. Just go and click on that and use an email address or an Apple account or uh, what have you. Uh, in our case, we're gonna go ahead over to download and then click on Plex Media Server. And then we're going to select our Windows distribution or our version. And we're going to say Windows 64-bit. And then we're going to tell it where to save, which is the desktop, and let that download. And then if we go over to our desktop folder, here is our Plex icon. Double click on that. And we'll click on Next. And it's going to ask us where we want to install it. And again, this is Plex Media Server. So we're actually installing the server itself on this Windows computer. Okay, now it's asking us if we want to launch, which we'll keep that checked. And we'll click on Finish. And we're going to minimize that. Okay, now we're going to log in with the account that we created. You'll notice that we're on Plex website. All we're doing is we're authenticating our account. And while that is logging us in, 
You can see over here on the left, we have home, watch list, live TV, music, movies, movies and shows, rentals, your media. Your media is going to be where you're going to have your TV shows and your movies. On the upper right-hand corner, we have settings, and this is where you're going to have your account and all of your different preferences. Okay, so it tells us how Plex works. And we're going to call this uh, server. It's asking us what we want to call this specific server. So we're using a Minus Forum. So I think we'll just keep that as the name. And it's asking us if we want to access MIDI outside our home. I'm going to say no. I'm going to click on Next. And then it's going to ask us to add our MIDI library, which we'll do in a second where I can do it right now. I just want to show you around a little bit. Okay, so first, let's go up to this little wrench up here where it says Settings. So under Settings, we're going to go to Library. And this is where we're going to tell it what to do with the MIDI media library that we will add. I usually leave a lot of this as default, but I'm going to click the first couple three or four here, scan my library automatically, do a partial scan when things are checked. I'll run a partial scan when things are changed or when it detects things are changed. And then I'm also going to ask it to scan my library periodically and the interval will be daily. So that means that whenever I make a change to a file or I add a new movie or TV show in the libraries that I make, Plex will detect it and it'll run the scan again to make sure that the libraries are up to date. And then I can also allow media deletion if I want to and there's a bunch of other stuff here that you can enable based on your preferences. Now, if we go down to transcoder, this is where you're going to tell it if you want to use hardware transcoding. Now, I don't have a Plex Pass, so I don't have the option to enable hardware transcoding. I only have the ability to enhance software transcoding. So hardware and or software transcoding is really the process of tweaking streams media like a YouTube video like this one or Netflix so it plays smoothly on your smartphone or TV. As an example, if I wanted to stream The Dark Knight in 1080p on a smart TV that only supports 720p, which is a lower resolution, the video would need to be transcoded down from 1080p to 720p to ensure smooth playback on the television, which software transcoding should be able to do without much trouble. However, if you're attempting to stream The Dark Knight in 4K to your TV and your iPhone and your iPad simultaneously, you'll need hardware transcoding like a compatible CPU or more likely a dedicated graphics card installed on your Plex server to handle it. To leverage hardware transcoding on Plex, you'll need a Plex Pass account, which costs $6.99 US or £5.16 per month. The Plex Pass also allows you to share your video libraries with others or even watch your content remotely. Otherwise, it's free to sign up and watch Plex with just software decoding. I will leave some examples of compatible CPUs and GPUs for hardware decoding in the video description. Okay, now that we've covered that, let's go over and add our libraries. So we'll go over here under Manage, and we'll click on Libraries. And we're going to click on Add Library. And we have movies, TV shows, music, photo, other home videos, whatnot. We'll select Movies for this example. And you can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it Movies. Click on Next. And then it's going to ask you where the movie's located, or where's your media located. There's an option here to browse for your media folder. Also here, there's a link to Plex's guide to organizing your libraries and their naming conventions, which I would strongly recommend that you familiarize yourself with. It tells you how to name the different movies, how to name the folders they're in. This is especially important for TV shows. I'm only so smart because I couldn't be bothered with reading the guide at first mislabeled several TV shows and then ended up spending hours fixing everything. So you want to make sure that you go through this and uh, you don't have to do it perfectly, but you do want to make sure that you're familiar with how to label things based on, you know, as an example, Blade Runner, you make sure that you have the right year in there. I don't know that you have to put an editorial cut, but it's probably a good idea that you know how Plex likes it so it can identify it and show it the way it's supposed to be showed. So back to adding media to the server, we'll click on Browse for Media Folder, go down to Videos, and click on Videos again, and click on Add, and click on Add Library. Now it's going to scan that library, and here is the Punisher here. Everything looks good. Thomas Jane, John Travolta, yep, looks good. So that, uh, I didn't even have to rename that, I just grabbed it from my library and popped it in there. So now if we go up to Home in the upper left-hand corner, and click on more. 
we have a listing of all of the different servers that I've set up. This is my Synology. Uh, here is the Menace Forum here that we just added. And here is the one movie that's in there. And if I go back up to the DS920, my Synology, and click on Movies, it's pulling all of these from my Synology. And one of the cool things is I can make this library bigger. I can have it sorted by detail view or table view. I can do a shuffle if I want to. I can go down to movies based on title. And then I can do collections. I can do playlists. I can do smart playlists. I can click on this Batman movie here or click on this little three button option. I can unmatch it. So if I click on unmatch, what that does is it brings up a menu where I can select other options for the movie in terms of maybe there might have been a different wallpaper that I want to use or maybe it has a different remake or a director's cut. Here's one, a cartoon. So there's a lot of different things I can do if I maybe misnamed it or if I miscategorized it. If we look at how my media is organized on my Synology, if I go under Blu-ray and DVD, the way I look when I bought it is that if it identified it correctly in the uh, media manager under Plex, then I didn't really mess with it. Some of them I needed to tweak a little bit. A lot of these have the year, some of them don't, some of them don't need it. And that is how you install and configure and organize your library for Plex on Windows. So that is going to wrap it up today for part one of the streaming media series. Next week, I will be doing a requested video review of KickPie's single board computer, the K2P. But following that, we'll have part two of the series with MB or Jellyfin, which is to be decided. Anyway, let us know in the comments what you think of Plex or if you're using Jellyfin, MB or something else entirely and how it's working for you. If you like it, if you're using it on a NAS or a computer. Otherwise, make sure you are subscribed to Mackie Tech so you don't miss out on my upcoming videos and make sure to check out my Patreon account if you'd like to support me. Otherwise, make sure you continue your Mackie Tech adventures by watching one of these videos that I selected for you specifically. Thank you again for watching and we'll talk to you again very soon.